If you're confused about what calculation groups are in Power BI, this is the video for you. Let me show you the basics, let me show what works, and let me show you what doesn't work. So let's get started. Okay, so calculation groups were released in October uh, last month, 2023. So you have to go preview features and turn it on, okay? Otherwise it won't work. Once you've done that, calculation groups are actually a very clever idea. The implementation I have some trouble with, but let's start with how it works. So in a model, you are probably going to do the same calculation over and over again, but with different measures. So for example, Northwind data set. Here we have sales and we have quantity. So we probably want to calculate last year sales and last year quantity. So last year sales is calculated like this. And last year, quantity is calculated the same way, but instead of the sales measure, we have the quantity measure, okay? So imagine you want to do traffic last year, you want to do commissions last year, you want to, so you will have like a thousand last year measures that are exactly the same. So this is what calculation groups are. They just allow you to create the basics of a measure in this case, last year, and then you substitute, instead of putting quantity and sales, you put selected measure. It means whatever measure you then drop in, that's the measure that will show. Beautiful, okay. So how do you create that? Let me show you. You go to the relationships pane, and if you turn this on on the preview features, you will get this model thing. We will talk about the semantic model in a different video. For now, no that here are the calculation groups. So we have no calculation groups, we're going to create one. So right click, new calculation group, yes. And the first, you know, there's a ton of things that are going to appear here. <laughs> the first one is calculation, this calculation group. The name that you put in there is the name that is going to show in the model, okay? So this is time intelligence, so let's call it time intelligence. So that is where we will put all time intelligence um, calculation item. Great. The calculation group column is the name that will show under the table on Power BI Desktop. So give, the, give it some name, like, I don't know, time intelligence group or something, whatever. And here on calculation items is where you will do the actual calculations. So the next step is to create the calculation items. The calculation items are the ones that, depending on what measure you put in, it will calculate. So we're going to do new calculation item. This is going to be called previous year. And you cannot do previous year sales, or previous year's order, because you don't know. It depends on the measure that you put in there, right? So you put calculate, and then you put, instead of putting orders or a quantity or whatever that you were putting here like we did before, you put selected measure there, and then you do same period last year, calendar date, to, in order to get previous year sales, like that. Perfect. So if we go now to the visualization pane, you're going to see here the calculation group and the calculation group column. These are the names that we gave, so give proper names so you know what it is. And now we're going to visualize it and see how it works. So we're going to put the year from the calendar, and then we're going to put the time intelligence group, which you will see is that it fails. Not really true, it's not failing, it's just that it doesn't have a measure to work on. It needs a selected measure in order to work. So as soon as you add the measure, let's put sales. It works, you can see, now suddenly everything is fine. So let's put this as a uh, matrix. So you have every year, previous year, and this is sales. Then you can add another one that is quantity in there, and then you have previous year sales and quantity. 
and you have one measure for that instead of, or you have one calculation group instead of having the two previous measures that we had before. You don't need them anymore. So now let's add a new item. Calculation items, new calculation item. <coughs> and this is going to be, I don't know, year to date, which is going to be calculate, and then you can have you can have total years to date, total year date. There are like a thousand ways to to create these. So let's pick one. Um, we're going to have date, year to date, calendar date. And there we have it. Perfect. So we go back in here and as you can see, it automatically adds previous year, year to date for all the measures that I have. So if I remove quantity, it'll just show for sales. If I add quantity, it will show for uh, sales and quantity. Okay. And here is where my problem starts and why I think calculation groups are not that useful. The implementation is missing something. And here's the thing. Every time you put a new calculator item in here, it will show. It will show everything, like boom. And it's expecting you basically to show everything in the table, which is not the way that things work in the real life. You show things in all kinds of visualizations. You can just fill parameters to select what's shown and what's not, but it just gets too complicated for most cases where field parameters are not needed. I, I do like field parameters. I think it's useful. I've used it plenty of times, but it's not everywhere that you want to put them in there. So what I would love and what I think that this would be very useful is that I could use these individually. So I want to decide where previous year is going to be put and just use previous year so like if it was a single measure instead of a group, you know? So I create them as group, but I can use them individually. Does it make sense? Because the way you need to fix and treat this to make it work visually is just such a nightmare. So that's why I'm not like a huge fan of calculation groups, actually. And I used to pity because we do need calculation groups because most of the times you're doing the same calculations over and over again. But then how are you using them in visualizations? It gets so complex. <laughs> Not worth it, you know. So have you tried them? Let me know what you think. And I will do more videos about the semantic model in the future. So take care.